Hi, Room 21 Rockstars, and welcome to our American Revolution study video. I hope that you guys had a great day. I really missed you um, during my meetings all day. You guys know that I would rather be in the classroom any day rather than a bunch of meetings, but I will be back tomorrow, and our test is on Wednesday. So I'm going to provide you with a bunch of different strategies that you can use at home to help you study for the American Revolution test that is coming up on Wednesday. But remember, if you remember back to the 13 colonies test, one of the major focuses that that study video was looking at was kind of um, putting the studying in your own hands now. I'm going to give you a few ideas, but I want you to find what works best for you. Okay, because as you know, middle school is approaching faster than we can believe, and I want you to be equipped really well whenever you get there to, to use any study strategies possible that will best help you. So, a couple of things that I would personally take out right now and I'm going to do that right with you, would be number one, your social studies book and your interactive notebook. You might need a marker, pencil, paper, pen, things such as that. Now, the first source I'm going to show you to help you to study, as I do every single time, okay, you can earn yourself five house points if you complete this review and show it to me in class, begins on page number 268. Okay, and that's just a review and test prep for Unit 5. So that goes from 268 the whole way to page 271. This is an amazing resource to help you study because it really focuses on covering all of the major things that we've talked about in class. Okay, so page 268, five house points if you complete that and bring that in by um, Wednesday when we have our test. Now, a couple of things that we're going to look at today and to help you study. Basically what I've done is, um, today in class you completed these awesome comics. I've been looking at them tonight and I'm really excited by the work that you guys did. I gave you this sheet, right, and I told you, it kinda looks like the light's glaring, sorry guys, um, that you had to choose four of the events and make a comic for each of them. Okay, so this, this happens to be Logan's and as you can see here, these are the major events that we studied during the American Revolution. Okay, and I'll share a couple of the comics because I just thought they were amazing. Um, this one is actually Michael's. And here, let me take off his blue sheet real quick. He showed us the Boston Massacre. Okay, whenever the colonists threw the snowballs at the British, and then the British accidentally fired into the crowd and killed five colonists, and then we have the Boston Tea Party. So we have all of these major events. And the reason I had you do this today is because it's amazing... And we're trying to get at all of those multiple intelligences. Those of you who love to draw, who are visual learners, probably this was right up your alley today. You took these major events and you thought about them. And you had to know about them in order to make a comic about them. So that is why the first thing that I'm going to show you is these are the major events. And you may want to pause your screen right now. The Boston Massacre, Boston Tea Party, First Continental Congress, Battles at Lexington and Concord, Approval of the Declaration of Independence, Battle at Saratoga, Surrender at Yorktown, and the Signing of the Treaty of Paris. Those events are in order in which they occurred. And what you and you guys know this, this whole unit has really been like a story. Okay, Things started happening with the revolution that got the colonists all riled up. And then something really occurred to get the revolution going. Okay, we had the battle at Saratoga, and then the surrender at Yorktown. Okay, and then finally, 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 we have this thing at the end that occurs that really ends it and creates these thirteen colonies into a country. So what I did was I just took a regular sheet of paper and folded it hot dog style, just like this. Okay. I'll show you these two. And if you notice, I just took my marker and listed each of these events down the side. So I have the Boston Massacre, Boston Tea Party, First Continental Congress, Battle at Lexington Concord. You can um, pause the video if you need to write these down. And then my second sheet includes the other major events, the approval of the Declaration of Independence, the Battle at Saratoga, the Surrender at Yorktown, and the Treaty of Paris. Now, you guys really need to know these events inside and out. You need to know what um, significant happened there and you need to kind of know where they fall into place with the others. So if I tell you, if I give you three events and I, I might say which one happened first, okay? Now I don't worry, I'm not worried about the dates as I told you guys in class, 
But I am worried about um, the order in which they occur, okay? Because that's really important to the progression of the American Revolution, as you guys probably know. So, let me just move this light out of here for you guys. It seems like it's a bit, a bit of a glare. There we go. Okay, so I, I uh, was telling you guys that you need to kind of know the order in which they come. So if I say, which of these three came first? Here they are, ready? We have the Battle at Lexington and Concord. We have the Boston Tea Party, and we have the approval of the Declaration of Independence. Which, which of those three events came first? Okay, so the Battle at Lexington and Concord, the Boston Tea Party, and the approval of the Declaration of Independence. Think about it. What do you think? Good, the Boston Tea Party. Okay, that came first. That came before, you know, things were just starting to get worked up at that point. So what I want you guys to really focus on is you can take this and do a couple of things. You can kind of treat it like you did today in class when I was away with your comics, okay? You could draw a comic here to help you maybe write a sentence that helps you. You can just simply list out facts. So the Boston Massacre, I might do a little bulleted list. Let me show you what I come up with. I'm going to write down snowballs thrown by colonists. British fired into crowd and Paul Revere painting. So something you guys could actually do at home is, you know, take this sheet that we have, we have the Boston Massacre, write down the major events that occurred during that time in a bulleted list. So here I have, I have snowballs thrown by the colonists, the British fired into the crowd, and the Paul Revere painting, if you guys remember that. So that's one way that you guys could study at home. Another is you could just draw a picture beside that if you want to. Whatever really helps. Now, we're just looking for the major things that happened at each of these events leading up to the revolution. So I'm not looking for like a book for you guys to write here. This is helping you to kind of understand inside and out what are these events. Think about the ladder that you have in your book. You start at the bottom of that ladder and the colonists had to work their way up in your interactive notebook. And tomorrow I'll give you guys back your comics that you can also take home and use as a study tool. So you want to go down through all of these events and really learn them inside and out. Okay, now I'm going to pose a couple of questions to you guys right now to help you study. So you may want to pause the video, work on this. If you bring these in, you can get yourself two house points. And in fact, I'm going to write two and circle it there so that I remember how much those are worth. Now, let's look at a couple of questions. Okay, so my first question to you guys is what was the purpose of the First Continental Congress? Okay, that's one of the events that you had to write down. The First Continental Congress, what was the purpose of that? Think about it, say it out loud. What do you guys think? Good, it was to find a peaceful solution with Great Britain. Remember, the colonists actually wrote petitions over to King George III, and they were like, hey, we want to end this peacefully. We do not want war. Now, the king did not respond, and we're not quite sure why. Maybe it was because it took seven weeks to get anything across the Atlantic and seven weeks to get it back, or maybe it's because King George was just fed up. But regardless, the colonists, the First Continental Congress, remember somebody from each of the 13 colonies came together, and they were talking to him, and they sent letters, and they were trying to get this thing to end peacefully. So, the First Continental Congress was actually kind of like a peacemaker for the colonists. Let me get another question for you guys. Okay, so which of these three events came first? We have the Battle of Saratoga, which is nicknamed the turning point of the war. We have the Surrender at Yorktown, and we have the Treaty of Paris. So which would come first? The Battle of Saratoga, Surrender at Yorktown, and the Treaty of Paris. What do you guys think? Good, the Battle of Saratoga, because remember, that was a turning point. Now, what I want you to think right now in your minds is, the Battle of Saratoga was a turning point of the war. What did that help the colonists with? As soon as they won that war, something really big happened. Think about when we played tug-of-war with Mrs. Sutton's class. What was big about the win at, battle at Saratoga? 
Yes, the French began to help. The French were like, okay, now the colonists are winning. We don't really care for the British, so we're going to help you guys. And they helped them out dramatically, and that was huge in the colonists overall winning the war. So that was big stuff. Okay, so basically what you guys want to do with this is you need to know these events inside and out. Okay, I'm going to say that a hundred times. A couple of things you could do would include this. You can get two house points for that. With the names, you can make yourself flashcards. And if you guys notice, you could fold these over. So if you fold this over like this, you see Boston Massacre, you can have somebody at home quiz you, and they can be looking at the back side. They can say, hey, what happened at the Boston Massacre? And they can be checking your work on the other side to make sure that you're including everything that you need to. You can also draw comics like we did today in class for the visual learners out there. Anything that really helps you. You could write a song, create some type of way to remember it, anything that works. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next section though, which includes the famous people of the revolution. Now, couple things you could do you could do the same deal okay you can make cards I'll have note cards at school tomorrow if you guys want to take some home you could take this now there are some there is a big group of major people that you need to know that were involved in the revolution so here's what I'm gonna do for you guys for this and I want you to write these as I'm writing them so the first one write this down was Patrick Henry and then we have Paul Revere then we have Thomas Jefferson. Then we have John Adams. Okay, so that's my first page. I made four cards out of that. If you want to pause the screen so you can get these down, we have Patrick Henry, Paul Revere, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams. I will pause the screen if you want to write those down. I'm going to show you another page. Our next names are George Washington. Ben Franklin, Phyllis Wheatley, and Thomas Paine. Okay, so you may want to pause the screen and write down those names. We have George Washington, Ben Franklin, Phyllis Wheatley, and Thomas Paine. And finally, We have Lord Cornwallis and King George III. Now, as you guys know, I don't want you to know every single thing about these people. So here are those final names if you want to pause it on that screen, guys. So I'm not looking for you to know the, the life history of each of these major people in the revolution. And as you guys know, we were studying these all through our unit. Okay, so once again, it's kind of that flexibility in your mind. So if I say Patrick Henry, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? Well, I hear give me liberty or give me death. Okay, you know, because I think of that quote. Remember when he was at the Continental Congress and he was saying, either we're going to do something about this or give me liberty or give me death. He was basically saying, there is no reason for me to go on if I cannot have my freedom. Okay. If I say King George III, what do you think? Well, he was the king of Great Britain. Lord Cornwallis, remember, was that general at Yorktown. Okay, how about John Adams? That's one that we didn't talk about a great deal, but he is very, very important. John Adams. Remember in that video that I showed you guys of when they were signing it, John Adams was there, so he was one of the signers. Um, with the um, Declaration of Independence. He was what we call a framer. So he kind of put together the frame of the Declaration of Independence, but who is the major person who actually drafted the first draft? Good, that was Thomas Jefferson. Okay, so what you guys want to do with these is just kind of go inside and out, backwards and forwards with these. If you bring these in with notes or pictures or whatever's helping you to study, Okay, maybe beside George Washington, let me give you an example. I'm going to put the general of the Continental Army. 
And for me, I'm going to put a number one because I know that he, be, he went on to become the first president of the United States. So once again, you kind of have that study tool. It goes right across. George Washington is a general of the Continental Army. So if you bring in these pages with all of these famous Americans, you can get yourself five house points. And I'm going to write five on here so when I have this in school tomorrow, you can compare that as well. So we have major events and major people. Remember, it's like a story, guys. So really, another great way to study at home is just to sit down. And if you don't have anyone who is willing to listen to you spout out some history, just do it in front of a mirror and start from the beginning. Start with that French and Indian War. Go to the Proclamation Act of 1763 and just move on down and talk about all of those major events that occurred in sequential order. Just say one or two things about why that event is significant. Why are we spending time studying particular events? Okay, And that will really make your mind flexible when you go to take the assessment. Okay, I held the assessment in my hands right now. Mr. Stallone and I worked on it today, so I'm, you know, I'm really trying to help you in studying for what you need to know on there because I have that information with me at the moment. One other group of people that I think I want to talk about are the Native Americans because, as we know, we have the French and Indian War that takes place for seven years, okay? And it's the French against the British, but there are Native Americans on both sides of that war. Okay, so what were the Native Americans exactly doing during the Revolution? Well, think about it. Yeah, they were kind of just like the colonists. Some of them went with the Patriots, some of them went with the Loyalists, and some of them were neutralists, people who didn't take sides. Okay, they, you know, because they, this was their land as well, and so they kind of got pulled into the whole battle. Okay, so just think about the relationship that the Native Americans had with all of the people there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is pull out another sheet of paper. You can just do this orally. You don't have to write it down if you don't want to. I am going to take this sheet of paper and divide it into thirds. Okay, so some fraction work. I'm going to write one, two, and three down the side. Okay, and I'm going to label it at the top, colonial advantages. And we made this diagram in our Social Studies Interactive Notebook, guys, because there were three major advantages that the colonists had over Great Britain. Okay, And you really need to be able to speak with detail about these major advantages, especially whenever it comes to the assessment. Okay, Now, one good way to remember this is to actually think about the tug of war game that we had with Mrs. Sutton's class. So what I would do here is that you could draw pictures once again, or you could write what are the three major advantages. Take a few seconds. I'm going to do the same thing right now. Okay, guys, compare your work to mine and see what you have. <coughs> Excuse me. So, number one, I have leadership. Okay, think about all the major generals from the Patriots who fought, especially George Washington, who led the Continental Army. It was very strong. Number two, we had the French and Spanish support as soon as that Battle of Saratoga took place and the colonists decisively won it. And number three, we had the motivation. I mean, these colonists, think about the motivation that they had. Remember during the tug-of-war game when Mrs. Sutton and I said, okay, all of the colonists get 100 house points apiece if they win this game. The Great Britain had no incentive to win, but the colonists had all the incentive in the world. Okay, This was their land. This was their freedom. They would no longer have to pay taxes. So these were the major colonial advantages. Be able to speak at length about these. Remember I said that there would be a lot of writing on the social studies test. Be able to kind of explain these in detail kind of like I just did. So you may want to spend a little bit of time on these to make sure you feel pretty comfortable in talking about the advantages that the colonists had over Great Britain. Okay. 
The final thing that I want to talk about, guys, is basically the Declaration of Independence. So we watched that video. Now, here's my question to you. Did the Declaration of Independence start the war? No. Remember, the Battle of Bunker Hill started the war. That was the official start. The Declaration of Independence actually came right after the Battle of Bunker Hill. The fighting had already begun. Now, here's my other question. Okay, so we had these 56 individuals from the colonies sign this document. Did it end the war? Did the Declaration of Independence end the war? No. Remember, we talked about how George Washington was literally out on the battlefield while the Declaration of Independence was signed. So the Declaration of Independence was just what? What did the colonists proclaim in the Declaration of Independence? You know, what I want you to think about are the major ideas with the Declaration of Independence. You remember we read it to copy. Okay, so I'm just going to take the back of the sheet um, on the colonial advantages, to be quite honest, to save a little bit of paper. right here. And what I would do here is you could draw pictures once again, you can write down bullet points, really whatever fits into your learning style. What are the major ideas from the Declaration of Independence? Or what did it do? So jot that down, freeze the frame for a second. If you bring this in, you can get another house point. So right now you have a total of eight house points that you could potentially get from these sheets and you can get another five from doing the book review. So you could get 13 points for your house, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I'm going to give you some statements, and I want you to tell me, do these pertain to the Declaration of Independence? Do they relate to it? Do they, do they describe what its purpose was, or do they not? Okay, so which of the following are true about the Declaration of Independence? The colonists declared independence from Great Britain, true or false? Is that true or false about the Declaration of Independence? That's true. The colonists were declaring independence from Great Britain. We think about our debate. Okay, we had the colonists, we had the patriots, and the loyalists. True or false, the Declaration of Independence stated that all people have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Good, that's true, that's in our song. Those are the three rights that the, the um, founders believed every person was entitled to. Okay. Did the Declaration of Independence give the women the right to vote? No. Remember, think about the status of women in society at the time. In fact, the right to vote for women, remember we talked about in class, did not occur until the early 1900s, so almost uh, over 100 years later at least. Was the Declaration of Independence drafted by Thomas Jefferson? Yes, very good. Did the Declaration of Independence end the American Revolution? No, it did not. And was signing the Declaration of Independence considered treason? about what we talked about. Yes, good. Remember, we said that every single person who signed the declaration, all 56 of those people, was really putting their life at risk because of what they were doing. So it was not a good idea. Um, or I don't want to say it wasn't a good idea. It was obviously a good idea because they were <laughs> declaring independence and starting, you know, kind of head starting our country, um, so to speak. But it was just not a good idea for their safety because had the colonists lost... These individuals are who King George would be coming after because, remember, they proclaimed the Declaration of Independence all over the land. It was something that they let everybody across the land know about. Okay. Now, that's about everything that I have for you guys. Like I said, about half of this test will be writing this time around. So the idea here is, is to be able to explain in great detail... Each of the events, all of the major people, things like that. Use all of the pages that I showed you, including the book review, which is another great resource. If you bring in some other type of study source, resource that you have at home that you use rather than mine, I would love for you to bring it in. I would love for you to share it with the classroom, and I'll also give you some house points for that based upon what you do. Now, what I'm going to do very quickly is to, um, just point you to our class fusion page. If you go to our class fusion page, I have two links posted. If you go right down the page, it says American Revolution Study Links. Okay, and there are two awesome games that you can play that really help you to think about the major events of the revolution, 
and the major individuals involved in the revolution. If you spend some time with that, that's another great resource that you could use, as well as SOL Pass that is on the so, um, site there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you the opportunity, since you stuck it out with this video, putting in that time, effective effort that I'm so proud of you for, if you come and tell me the key phrase, which is, give me liberty or give me death, you will get five additional house points. Remember, the key phrase is, give me liberty or give me death. I believe totally in your abilities for this assessment, guys, but you do have to spend some time and kind of make your mind mobile, make it flexible, be able to talk about an event. If you don't have someone to study with at home, you can study in front of a mirror. You can study with a pet. All of these resources are great areas that you can work on to study at home. And the goal is, with these study videos, as you know, that as you get closer and closer to middle school, you know, your teacher probably won't do this for you next year, but at least you'll have something to help you to kind of further yourself along. So if you guys have any questions... Just call or email me. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Remember, our test is on Wednesday, even though it's an early out day. So make sure you're studying, studying, studying. I'm very proud of you, rock stars, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.